You got to get the big drill. Look at this place. It's... Where's the big two-handled one? This will kill you. It's going to hurt you. No. I'm out. <laughs> Here, let me show you. <laughs> Sounds to me like Eric's trying to drill something again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have you do this. This actually really hurts my shoulder. If you can't see, more stuff showed up late last night for the spray tender trailer. This is the dash system. All the way from Canada it came. So we got a lot of that's so loud! It's because you wreck all the drill bits. So we've got uh, two tote decks, one's a tote cage, one's a tote deck, I believe is the technical term. I won't guarantee you that. A fill port, and these are really cool. I'm excited to experience these. These are air-powered chemical pumps, so that will fill into um, the express fill from the totes that will be on top of this, plumb to that, plumb to the express fill. So we're working on getting it both attempting to work on getting it bolted down and then we got to reassemble that or assemble that one and get that one in front of this one you, you need help i'm <clears throat> i'm almost sure i've got a bone spur <laughs> or it's just pretty soon my arm's gonna just fall down and not even be connected anymore it hurts so bad Got all the meat off of me. Here. I'm next. All right, we've got it fastened down. One through the steel, one through the wood. Steel would probably be plenty, but we wanna, there's plenty of room for bolts, so we're making sure she's strong. Gate closed up. Latch, so you can put like your AMS bags in there, your two and a half gallon jugs, they ain't gonna blow off the trailer, and I can access them from up here. This rolls open. You can come right in and then find the big Swede locked in here when he's being naughty. I can lock him in. <laughs> grandma, Grandma called Dad last night because this was sitting in the yard because I was the only guy here and couldn't get it moved into the shop, so I just left it sit in the middle of the yard. And she thought it was a dog cage. Oh my. <laughs> Very overbuilt dog cage. <laughs> oh yeah. So I think the funnest thing about these, since they're made in Canada, is that the rollers on these? Can you tell me what that is? It's a hockey puck. I think that's so cool. Okay, so the next tote deck is the platform is gonna come out forward here. We're gonna have to move some stuff, but basically we put our totes up here, a uh, bulk chemical roundup, enlist one, liberty, whatever we're spraying at the time, and then we quick coupler onto the side and then that pump stack is gonna have to be somewhere up here too that will suck off of there into here you'll you'll see as it comes together well we uh, saved you the process of putting it together it's pretty straightforward but there was a couple things that had to be taken apart and put back together because we had it backwards but this is just the platform so no cage rolling cage this is the way we wanted it set up so we got the side nets so that if you wanted to put something in there that could potentially fall out, it's there to catch it. Most of the jugs, bags for sure, will be in the actual um, cage. We just gotta tighten a few more things up here. Yeah, that comes off pretty easy, so if you wanna roll in with your forklift, put in a pallet. Now, we do have to verify with the uh, guy <laughs> that we got this put together, and I'm hungry, so we're gonna go take a dinner break. I'm still not completely sold that I don't want to use the curtain side. Oh, 
<laughs> Can we burn that thing? <laughs> Says the guy that is in an air conditioned cab with AC seats. With a junk transmission. And he laughs about the canopy I want to put on that trailer. Don't forget about the massage seat. Running on number two is better. <laughs> wow. He's, he's up on top. Balance to, to balance the unit. Actually much easier. It's better than skating along next to the forklift. As long as the strap doesn't break. It would be a tremendous fall. <laughs> Getting there. This one ain't as easy due to uh, the uh, legs aren't. It's just got legs instead of crossbars. I think we can manhandle it from here, I think. Why manhandle it when we have a forklift? Because I'm crooked. Sorry. Because we, we don't clean our workspace. Just unhook it all back up. I think we're pretty good. We've, we're hearing this unfamiliar sound. It's raining. I thought it was supposed to snow today. This is gross. <laughs> this is going to turn to ice is what this is going to do. That'll make a fun drive home. Huh. How are we supposed to snowmobile in this? <laughs> <laughs> Big heavy lifting part of the day is over with, I think. We've gotten them fastened down. We were able, they did line up on the I-beams underneath. So we were able to hit both of the I-beams. So that's good for two reasons. Number one, strength to bolt to. And number two, the sheer weight is gonna be where you want the weight to be. This one is a little narrower than the, the cage tote. Overall, I think we're pretty satisfied. Now is the part where kind of held off on doing really anything to the trailer because we wanted to know exactly how big this was gonna be, how much space it was gonna use up. Now it's just time to move stuff around, envision in our head like where the hose reel is gonna sit, where this sits, where the future pump sits. It's the idea that we're gonna want, it. we're gonna wanna fill the sprayer on the right side of the trailer. And this has gotta find a home, but I think I lied. The heavy lifting ain't done. Now it's maybe worse than ever. This thing's heavy, and we picked a spot in the shop to work where we can't access the other side. It's uh, yeah. It's what happens when you just got 80 projects and <laughs> too small of a shop. So we need to grunt this over to the other side to see how the layout's going to happen, which might actually work out pretty good. If this is close to here, we maybe can just mount our valves to turn on the air. So these are air driven pumps, so turn on air to function them. And the closer it is to here, then I don't have to route. I was originally thinking we'll have to put the air turn on valves here or on the tank somewhere. But if this is like sitting right next to it, that'll be no problem, just whoop. It's raining harder again. So the power flashed here. So we figured we'd better get our seed tender back in. We pulled it out so we had more room in here. Look at this. That's hail, little hail pellets. When this freezes on the road, whoo wee, gonna be a good old time, ain't it? I'm getting a whole new body for the Impala. From the hail damage? Yeah. Little light, little snowflake yeah. hail stones. So we've got everything in here where I think we're gonna put it. Um, we haven't bolted or fastened anything. This is very spendy, so don't tip that over. And express fill here. This is where we'll be coming out of the express fill. We're thinking we'll be coming out, going under the trailer because I do not want any hoses anywhere. There, she flashed again. So we're gonna try to keep it all under the deck and then decide. I talked to Dash again, maybe thinking about putting a boom on. And we'll see. That might change our minds on where we're running hoses and stuff. Thundering. Yeah, it's, I'm sure when it chocks the ground, it spreads across everything because it's all water right now. <laughs> you get zapped from a mile away. And we're back, another day. Back to the trailer build. So Brody's welding these brackets on, the express fill to control our air pump to fill chemical into here. I'm gonna have a meter under there. Basically, if I want this pump to run, I just will hit this, that'll supply air to there. 
Look at the professional little brackets Brody's made. I, I didn't make the brackets. Oh, that was Eric? That was Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will have four pumps, four little valve or quarter turn valves to control that. It's coming together. Now I gotta somehow mount this underneath the floor here. And then I'm gonna have my fab fabricating team design some handles that go on to here, that come up through the floor, so I can control it from on top of the deck. It's gonna be nice. Brody loves to hear it. But he loves building and welding. All right, we got this mounted in place. Um, now is to route the hoses. This is your central fill. So from this tank and the rear tank come into the back side of this, hook up to these valves. And then you come out of there to your pump, which is coming tomorrow and then we'll route those hoses, but we're gonna get the tanks hooked up to this first. So here comes the first, the first wrestle with the three inch black hose of the trailer build project. Watch what you're aiming that thing, man. I'll, I'll just hold this. I need to come closer to me. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Okay, I think we're on. We're good enough. Oh. First one out of many. We're we gonna go we're gonna time. warm it on more. Warm it on more, warm it up more next time. Yeah. It wasn't warm enough. Well, today was just tedious. Not much to film. We did get that mounted up and the hose connected to that tank and this hose is connected to the back tank and then we ran out of fittings which I did order some more from Farm Chem. I gotta go make another order because I gotta get flow meters for those pumps so I know how much I'm putting in there. So um, I'm gonna do that tonight and then I'm gonna call it a night and start in again tomorrow. So I'm on farmchem.com right now. I'm going to order four flow serve hose mounted meters. I want the hose mount, not the pump mount. So I'm gonna just connect it in there, right on the tank. Um, getting a couple of fittings also. I'm gonna apply my discount code. So right here is where you add the coupon code. Larson23, gets you 5% off. And that's 5% off on anything on their website. So boom, order placed. It'll be here in a couple of days, hopefully. Normally they're really fast shipping. So just like that, that's done. And I can go home for the night, come back to this tomorrow. I believe the pump's showing up tomorrow. So we'll be able to figure out where we want to locate that at and how we're going to plumb that into the system. It's coming along pretty quick, but I just need all the stuff here. It's another snowstorm and the delivery truck driver for our pump said, Come meet me, I'm heading back to the <laughs> loading dock. It's too bad. So we met him at the intersection. We picked up our new banjo pump off the back of the truck. And now we have now, to get it out of a box? Now we gotta get it up on our trailer and figure out how we're gonna plumb this in. Is this the death filter? <laughs> I suppose these new ones have death. <laughs> yeah, gas engine. So this bad girl here is supposed to, I believe, do 500 gallons a minute or more. So what we have to do actually is run a four inch suction line, which is this big elephant trunk right here. Needs to be plumbed up here. Pressure side is three inch because you can force water through, but sucking, it needs to have Lots of flow. And then we gotta cut holes in the trailer to get pipes from there to here, from here to there. <laughs> Is there oil in it? It's always worth checking. It looks like it's never been ran. That's cool. Uh, good there's, thing we checked it. There's no oil. <laughs> nice. You know what causes me anxiety? This hole working zone. Look at this. Of just fittings and tools and, and Chet and me. See this is what this will work. 
<laughs> Just hanging off the side. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're gonna take a hole saw, cut through the deck. Um, and then we're coming up into here with the four inch hose. We gotta get over there, I cut a hole in the deck. And then Eric's like, you know, this goes straight up. Why don't we go up and over? But now I have a hole there and I'd hate to be looking like a fool. Breathing room. Where's our gaskets? This Demco box used to be mounted right there. We took it off because we're gonna be coming out of this port over and up and we didn't wanna mess around. So we took the storage box off. We can either remount that somewhere else or we have a box for another project sometime in the future. I have a message for Demco. It's too high a quality wood. We need lesser quality. <laughs> ah! Doggo! That wasn't good. <laughs> I better lock that bastard up. <laughs> What are you doing to my trailer? Trying to drill. Hold on. Hold what? on to the battery. There Here, you, you demonstrate for me. Here. Stand back, don't be too impressed when I give her here now. Oh, that's gonna hurt me when that grabs, ain't it? Oh, that moves, huh? Oh! <laughs> You got to get the big drill. Look at this place. It's... Where's the big two-handled one? This will kill you. It's going to hurt you. No. I'm out. <laughs> Here, let me show you. <laughs> What a challenge. I should have just used the sawzall. Ah! That's my receipt. That's important. Just laying out here. So this is the setup we're going to have. Nothing screwed down yet. But we're going from the 4 inch to a 3 inch manifold because that's what's on the pump. Don't get the blue stuff on Don't me. Don't walk into my blue stuff. We're 90ing down. Then a 7 inch straight pipe to a 45 degree angle where we'll be able to fasten off of this for support over across right into there. It's gonna be so clean so far. We've managed to keep all hoses under the trailer and hidden, because I don't like stuff on the deck for tripping, like the curtain side is. So that's what we got going. That will allow the best flow possible, I guess. They wanted it within, they wanted four inch within, well, as close as you could get it, but this is, the closest I can get it, and still look clean. Boy, I wish they could have seen that struggle. <laughs> we put rubber in there just to try to minimize some vibration. Boy, that was difficult. Okay, we gotta go help Doug. You having fun? It's the best. So if you can see how bent this bumper is from via deer. You ready? Uh, how heavy is this? It shouldn't be too heavy with two big guys like you. Okay, right? yeah. So, we're putting on a new bumper, new subframe. He's been having fun. Then, of course, the new one comes with a bunch more lights that the corrosion will take off. You want to open the door and then we'll just put this on the bottom cap? Yeah. Okay, how's the leg handle, the steps? One step at a time. Yeah. It's maybe time to go home though now. So, three inch fittings, putting them in hose is a difficult thing. We'll see how four inch goes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, we should do four inch all the time. That was like a really pleasant surprise though. I didn't think I needed to lube that one up. <laughs> now the Vaseline will just cause it to blow it off. 
But there should never be pressure there because that's suction, so. Isn't that clean? Right up into the pump. Not sure, I put this on there. A lot of stuff I'm doing to this is forward thinking to winterization. So if we go up here and back down, I've got an air valve plumbed in over there. That's not where we're gonna blow the line out. That air valve is only for winterization one time a year. It, it'll make it easy to pressurize. So if I close this, I'll be able to blow that whole system out the hose. And so a lot of this is just making sure we don't have to when it comes to winterizing, which we've done on other trailers. And I'm not saying we'll have this one perfect right away either, but it's like, oh, we should have used the cam lock there. We should have had one of these where we could took it apart. I wanted a simple and easy, so less time maintaining for winter. Got this installed. I'm excited for the 500 gallons a minute that this banjo pump puts out. Excited to, that this project's under the way because we're getting, don't look like it outside right now, but we are getting close to planting, so we need to get this wrapped up. Anyways, I think this is gonna be the end of the video. Stay tuned for more trailer upgrades. We got some more plumbing to do and more stuff that has to go on here, but I think for today, video is gonna be over. I uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you guys next time.